Countless men and women have fallen foul of the so-called Kennedy curse over the years. Is it just bad luck, or does fate really have it in for America's foremost political family? Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. was the eldest child and the namesake of his father, so he was the natural focal point of Joe Sr.'s political aspirations. Joe Jr.'s grandfather, Joseph Fitzgerald, even told the press that the child would be the future president of the nation. The young man certainly seemed to be heading that way, too. He was a star athlete and a gifted student with a keen interest in politics and reportedly considered a run for Congress. However, his career took a dramatic left turn in 1941 when he chose not to wrap up his law studies at Harvard, instead enlisting to become a naval aviator. Soon enough, Joe Jr. was flying patrol planes in the Caribbean. He later piloted bombers for the British Naval Command, and in 1944, he joined Operation Aphrodite, a top-secret program that utilized radio-controlled drone planes loaded with explosives. The idea was to release the drone in the air and help its controllers crash it into its target. Unfortunately, the project went awry, and two mysterious explosions destroyed the drone, killing both Joe Jr. and another pilot. Otherwise known as Kick, Kathleen Kennedy was born in 1920, and she got a lot done in the 28 years before her untimely death. Apart from maintaining the lavish social presence practically required for Kennedy, she volunteered for the Red Cross, worked for a newspaper in Washington, D.C., and arranged a number of charity events. In 1944, Kick married a British nobleman named William Cavendish, the Marquess of Hardington, and became Lady Kathleen Hardington. Kick had one quality that none of them had. None of them could have it. It was her unalloyed Americanness. Her mother was quite unimpressed with this, however, since Cavendish was a Protestant. Unfortunately, Kick was not destined for a peaceful family life. Her new husband was a military man, and he was called up a mere four weeks after the wedding. He died in service a few months later. Apart from a quick visit to see her stateside family, the widowed Lady Hardington chose to remain in England, and even found a new scandalous romance in Peter Wentworth Fitzwilling, another Protestant and a married man to boot. One divorce and assorted threats of disownment later, the pair were married. In 1948, however, the newlywed couple boarded a plane to visit Kennedy's father in France. The trip ended in disaster when the plane flew into a storm and crashed, killing everyone on board. Due to Kick's scandalous reputation, her father, Joe, was the only member of the Kennedy clan to attend the funeral. Arguably the greatest tragedy in the lives of John F. Kennedy and his wife, Jacqueline, occurred on August 9, 1963. That was the day the couple lost their third child, Patrick Bouvier Kennedy, who passed away less than two days after he was born. Born five and a half weeks early, Patrick suffered from a lung condition called hyaline membrane disease, which back then posed a grave threat to premature babies. Recognizing the situation for what it was, President Kennedy immediately ordered a Secret Service agent to fetch a chaplain to baptize the child. That was about all that could be done. Despite world-class care, the Kennedys could do nothing but wait and hope. The rest of America stood vigil with them. The country was holding its breath for news of the boy's situation, and many gathered in front of the hospital to show support. Sadly, Patrick died after just 39 hours. Still, the cloud of tragedy was marked by an unforeseen silver lining, as this traumatic event helped bring JFK and Jackie back together. Previously, their relationship had suffered due to the president's constant womanizing. It wouldn't last, though, as they would travel to Dallas together just a few months later. It's hard to imagine the idea of the Kennedy curse ever gathering pace without the most high-profile tragedy in the family's long history the assassination of the 35th President of the United States. President John F. Kennedy was fatally shot on November 22, 1963, while riding in an open-air motorcade in Dallas. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. The President is dead. Authorities later arrested U.S. Marine and devoted Marxist Lee Harvey Oswald for the assassination. But Oswald was shot by a nightclub bigwig called Jack Ruby before he could be taken to court. The many confusing details surrounding the case have since turned JFK's murder into a hotbed of unanswered questions and conspiracy theories. Some believe the murder took place at the behest of popular national boogeymen of the time, such as Cuba or the USSR, partly because Oswald held certain connections with these nations. The president also led a life full of secrets, from his many affairs to his medical troubles, and every new revelation about JFK's past seems to fan the flames even further. Even today, the death of JFK continues to grip public imagination. After his older brother, Robert Francis Kennedy was probably destined to become the next most successful politician in his family. For a long time, he lived in his brother's political shadow. Bobby Kennedy got a start in the game by acting as JFK's campaign manager during his 1952 Senate run, and after stints on various Senate subcommittees, he returned as his brother's campaign manager for the 1960 presidential election. 
JFK subsequently appointed Bobby as his attorney general, and in this role, he campaigned tirelessly for civil rights. After his brother's assassination, Bobby continued his work as a U.S. senator. On March 16, 1968, Bobby Kennedy announced his candidacy for the presidency, but he never made it to the White House. On June 5th of the same year, a man named Sirhan Sirhan shot the 42-year-old senator in the hallway of the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles. While his assassination is not quite as prone to speculation as his brother's, it has certainly raised a few eyebrows over the years. In 2018, Kennedy's own son Robert Jr. revealed that he doesn't believe that Sirhan was acting alone. The concept of the Kennedy curse didn't just show up out of nowhere. Though the media has been happy to play up the story, the original idea actually came from the family itself. It was conceived by Senator Ted Kennedy in 1969. This was a year after the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy, which marked the second high-profile assassination in the family's history. Ted Kennedy's musings on what he called an awful curse unleashed upon the family may have been more than a little hyperbolic, though you can hardly blame him for being a little despondent. Indeed, even Ted himself was destined for tragedy. The very same year he came up with the Kennedy curse, he was involved in an infamous incident at Chappaquiddick. On a nighttime drive in Massachusetts, Ted drove his car off a bridge and into the pond below. He then returned to his hotel room and failed to report the crash until the next morning, despite the fact that the young woman who had been riding with him hadn't made it out of the vehicle. My conduct and conversations during the next several hours, to the extent that I can remember them, make no sense to me at all. Despite Ted's insistence that he had tried his best to rescue her, the events surrounding the incident were suspicious enough to destroy his presidential aspirations. The deck was stacked against David Kennedy from a young age. In 1968, when he was only 12 years old, David almost drowned in the sea off Malibu. He was only rescued in the nick of time by his father, Robert F. Kennedy. Mere hours later, David witnessed his father's assassination on television. He had already been a difficult child and became even more so after Bobby's death. He engaged in vandalism and got into trouble for speeding, reckless driving, and driving without a license. In 1973, his carefree attitude behind the wheel caused an accident that paralyzed one person and left David himself with a back sprain. David turned to narcotics to deal with the pain, and it seems he never stopped using them after that. In 1979, the 24-year-old was discovered battered and bruised in a low-rent motel in Harlem with 25 packets of heroin nearby. Although he initially tried to play things off as a robbery, he eventually confessed to the police that he was, in his words, a stoned-out junkie. Although the Kennedy family and friends immediately and publicly offered their support to their prodigal son, David never recovered from his addiction. At 28 years old, he was found dead from an overdose at a hotel in Palm Beach. Michael Kennedy was something of a black sheep in the Kennedy family. His life was marred by a number of high-profile scandals ranging from substance abuse to alleged affairs with young babysitters. And although he expressed regrets for his serious mistakes, he never got the chance to make up for them. In 1997, the 39-year-old suffered a fatal accident while on a family ski trip at Colorado's Aspen Mountain. Michael was skiing with a number of family members when he unexpectedly crashed into a tree. Though it took only four minutes for the first ski patrol to reach the site of the accident, nothing could be done. He was declared dead later that day. The Kennedy family had long enjoyed skiing, and many of them were fond of ski football, a dangerous game in which players toss a football or a similar object to each other while skiing down the slope. They had been warned against it for obvious reasons, but Michael had reportedly been playing the game at the time of his death. As a competent skier, he was able to play the game at a much faster speed than most. Sadly, when he caught a snow-filled bottle the players had used as a makeshift football, he lost control of one of his skis and crashed into a tree. And we'll try to bring you up to date precisely with what we know about the search for John F. Kennedy. Like his father, John F. Kennedy Jr. was a charismatic man whose life was cut short by tragedy. John Jr. was only 38 years old on July 16, 1999, when the single-engine Piper Saratoga he was piloting unexpectedly plummeted and disappeared from radar near Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. Kennedy, his wife Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, and her sister Lauren Bissett all perished in the accident. Their bodies were found five days later, still strapped in their seats. The trip was intended to be more or less routine. First, they planned to drop Lauren off at the Martha's Vineyard Airport, and then they would have continued to Hyannis Port for the wedding of John Jr.'s cousin. However, a number of unwise decisions on John's part contributed to the disaster. For one thing, he was not a very experienced pilot and did not hold a full pilot's license. He also had been chastised for being overly confident in the air. To top things off, he was flying a fairly difficult-to-operate plane in tough weather conditions with no flight plan and no instructor on board in case the flight went awry. Perhaps it was no surprise that it did. 
When Robert F. Kennedy was gunned down in the Ambassador Hotel, he left behind 11 children. One of them was Kathleen Kennedy Townsend, who served as Lieutenant Governor of Maryland from 1995 to 2003. In 2020, Kathleen's daughter Maeve Kennedy Townsend McKean traveled with her husband and their three children to her mother's home off of Chesapeake Bay in Shadyside, Maryland. They were hoping to enjoy some respite from the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. During a game of kickball in the late afternoon on April 2nd, the ball went into the water and Maeve and her oldest son, Gideon, climbed into a canoe to retrieve it. They neglected to wear life jackets and the canoe disappeared. It was found later that day, a few miles from the house, nobody aboard. A 3,600 square mile search by the Coast Guard proved unsuccessful, and so the Kennedy family called off the search. Expecting the worst, the goal of the search moved from rescue to the recovery of the remains. Maeve's body was found on April 6th, then Gideon's two days later. A medical report found that they had drowned in the waters of the Chesapeake Bay. 